All right, hi everyone. I'm back with another video. Um, I apologize for having so few videos recently. Um, I've been busy moving around and getting situated with a new job, so been finally settled and I can go back to making kind of more of my regular videos of reviews. And so, as you can see on the screen and by the title, obviously, this is going to be a review of the iFi IEM Match. Um, this is a kind of a dongle that you can use with your sensitive in-ear monitors, in-ear earphones, or headphones in general. And so, firstly, I want to thank Lawrence at iFi again for allowing me to get a pair of these for free for a review. And so, I want to firstly say that. And then another thing that I had wanted to mention is that um, I tend to listen to music at low volume levels, and so having an accessory like this is extremely beneficial for people who listen to low level audio, such as myself. And so what this IEM match does is it basically outputs, so your output signal from an amplifier will go into here, and then you'll plug in your headphones into here. And so this will allow you to decrease the amount of volume that you hear from your earphones. So it's basically an attenuator, um, kind of like a, a resistor that you can add to the end of your earphones or headphones that you can reduce the amount of volume that you hear from an amplifier. And so why I particularly was interested in this is because, again, I listen to music at low volume levels, but a lot of headphone amplifiers out there, they have a lot of volume output from even lowest settings. And so headphone amplifiers such as the Objective 2 or the Oppo HA2 or more desktop headphone amplifiers, um, they often tend to output a lot too much volume for me to listen to music at a comfortable, low-level listening situation. And so this IM match kind of fixes that. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I didn't actually make an unboxing video of this, so I'll just do that right now very quickly. So like a lot of iFi products, you get a lot of cool stuff inside of the box. And so you get this warranty card, uh, the user manual, you get these foam earplugs that you can use when going to a concert or something. So just to keep your ears in healthy condition when you're listening to loud concert-like level volumes. And you also get this airline adapter, so you can use this on an airplane, which often have two mono jacks, and so you can listen to stereo audio from there. And then, of course, you get the IM match, which is right here. So I'll just move these out of the way. So on the IM match itself, you have the output of the headphone amplifier going into this part of the IEM match. And as you can see, there's a balanced and a single-ended switch here. And so this will actually let you use balanced headphones with your adapter, your IEM match. And so if you have a headphone amplifier that can output balanced audio, this is a 3.5 millimeter jack. So you will have to make sure that your Headphone amplifier has an output for 3.5 millimeter TRRS jacks. Um, most of them out there are for the 2.5 balance connection or XLR. So you will have to probably have an adapter to go with this adapter, um, which is unfortunate. Um, and also this, this enclosure is made of magnesium alloy, but on this part in particular, the part that plugs into the adapt to your headphone amplifier, I found that it's actually loose. So the, the build quality itself is good, just that this connection is loose, which is kind of an odd thing to have kind of wiggle room, I guess, because this part connects directly to your amplifier. Anyway, so that's one of the, the downsides to this that I found throughout using this almost every day for the past couple months. And so, again, you can switch between balanced and single-ended. One of the interesting things is that if you use single-ended headphones, so when you plug in your single-ended headphones here, you can be in either the balanced switch or the single-ended switch, and it will not affect the output at all. So it's a little bit interesting to hear, but 
that's that. Pretty good design there. And then moving up here, we have a 6N silver cable. So 6N means 0 0.000001 or whatever percent uh, impurity basically inside of the silver cable. So it's a high quality silver connection. And that goes to this kind of large portion here where you can plug in your 3.5 millimeter headphones there. So that's another thing that I found to be a downside is that in addition, if you use the balanced headphone connection here, you will need, you'll most likely need the 3.5 millimeter adapter here. And then your balanced headphones will likely need a 3.5 millimeter adapter. So if you're going to use this with balanced headphones, I suggest you make the 3.5 millimeter adapters because not very many people can actually build one for you. So, which is unfortunate, but it, it makes for a good do-it-yourself experience. So just to, to keep that in mind, um, I don't have any 3.5 millimeter balanced headphones or balanced headphones in general, except for my AKG 701, and I did not make an adapter for it. So I can't tell you how this sounds with the balanced connection, but everything else that I have is single-ended, so I can tell you how that sounds. So once you get to this part, there are actually two settings on this. So as you can see on the screen, if it autofocuses, there are two settings on here. One is for the high sensitivity setting, and the other one is for an ultra sensitivity setting. So if you switch it between the two, it just changes how much of the signal is attenuated. On the high setting, it's 12 decibels, and on the ultra setting, it's it's double that, so 20 minus 24 decibels of attenuation. So what I prefer is the ultra setting because I listen to music at low volume levels, so I want to have as much as low of a signal as possible while still having some wiggle room in the volume. And so that is one application of the iFi IM match is that if you have a smartphone or other device that uses a digital attenuation, oftentimes you'll find that the settings between volume one and volume two are very large. So and especially in the case of my smartphone, which I'm using the OnePlus 3 to record right now, um, the difference between zero volume and level one volume is huge in terms of using sensitive in-ear monitors or in-ear earphones. And so having this IM match between the interface there is actually very nice because if I have it set on ultra sensitivity, I can have volume zero, one, two, three, maybe four, so I have four steps of volume before it gets to the same level of loudness as it was just that one volume without the IEM match. So it's a very convenient dongle to have if you need to have the extra wiggle room of volume adjustment. So another application of the IEM match, and I don't have it with me right now since I didn't bring it down when I moved here, um, but if you have a headphone amplifier that has some background hiss, such as the Oppo HA2, which I had mentioned in my review video that you can see here. Um, there is some background hiss when you listen to it, and so that's kind of unfortunate for the HA2, but luckily there's things like the iFi IEM match that can help solve that. So having this on any setting, in my experience, allowed the background hiss to go away, and so that both allowed better volume adjustment with the HA2's volume knob, as well as reduce and pretty much eliminate the background hiss that I was able to hear with my sensitive headphones and in-ear monitors. And so that's another advantage of the IM match is that it can reduce the amount of background hiss. A third advantage of the IM match is in some headphone amplifiers, such as the Objective 2 here, if you have the volume knob at low positions, it will have a channel imbalance. And so in the case of the Objective 2, there's actually channel imbalance until about the nine o'clock position. And so I will show you on the screen here a measurement that I had done on the Objective 2 from Audio Precision at CanJam SoCal 2017. And as you can see, the volume adjustment 
is shown here as a channel imbalance. And so from the left side to the right side, I was adjusting the volume potentiometer on the objective too until it came to about the same uh, discrepancy between the left and the right channel in terms of the voltage output. And so with uh, sensitive in-ear headphones and or in-ear earphones and headphones, I tend to listen to the objective too at the nine o'clock position. And at the nine o'clock position is about 50 millivolts. So as you can see on the chart there, 50 millivolts is about where the left and right channels become indistinguishable in terms of the channel imbalance for me. And for sensitive in-ear earphones and headphones, I would prefer to have a little more wiggle room in terms of the volume there because 50 millivolts is quite a bit of power for sensitive in-ear headphones and in-ear earphones and headphones. And so um, having the IM match between the two reduces that discrepancy. So I can have the volume at a lower perceived volume from the objective to with the IEM match at the nine o'clock position. And then I will have some wiggle room between nine o'clock and 12 o'clock to adjust the volume on the potentiometer of the objective too. So that gives me a lot of wiggle room for volume adjustment while keeping it at a low listening level. And so back on the screen here, one of the advantages that I've almost always used the IM match for is for sensitive in-ear monitors. So I will be doing a review of these next. These are the Ultimate Ears Reference Remastered custom in-ear monitors. And so I have been pretty much using the IM match with these at all times um, because I find that the Ultimate Ears Reference Remastered is pretty sensitive and for low level volume listening, I will need a lot of wiggle room for volume. And the IM match provides that wiggle room volume because it reduces, it attenuates the volume by 24 decibels on the ultra setting. So that gives me a lot of wiggle room on the volume knob to adjust it to what it would be without the IM match. So that's one of the, the benefits of using the IM match is that you can just have so much more wiggle room in the volume knob. Um, when you're using really sensitive headphones or in-ear earphones. And so one of the, the things that I think is going on in this IM match is that it's not just the resistor being added to your inner earphones or your head sensitive headphones, but it's actually a voltage divider. And so actually on the box of the IEM match, it specifically says, so it's made of an aluminum magnesium alloy shell. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, maybe it's in the, the user manual. So here's the user manual. It did say in one of the sensitive settings here. Oh, there we go. Gold plated printed circuit board with audiophile components such as MELF resistors. And so you often see MELF resistors being used in audio. Um, what MELF actually means is metal electrode leadless face. So usually a resistor on a standard looking resistor, you will have the resistor kind of a cylinder itself, and then you will have the metal leads that stick out. Those metal leads will go through through hole components so if you're using such as a, a breadboard, you can stick the resistor leads into those holes of the breadboard. Um, or if you're using a printed circuit board, sometimes you'll have a resistor with some metal, it, you'll have a surface mount component. So it's, it'll be a flat resistor that you can just put onto the PCB and then use a heat gun or something and melt the solder on the side of the resistor. In the case of a MELF resistor, it's actually a cylinder. So it's kind of like the Sharpie. It's a, a cylinder and it kind of rolls around on the PCB. So it's an inconvenient part to use, but um, in terms of its use, it's actually very stable. It's very reliable. It has a high performance and it does well under a lot of different temperature settings. So because of that 
um, mouth resistors often use an audio. And so in the case of this voltage divider, I think if you guys don't know what a voltage divider is, it's basically your input voltage, a resistor value, and your output voltage, and then in series with this resistor one, you'll have a second resistor connected to ground. And the output voltage is very, it varies depending on the resistor values that you choose in the circuit. So in the case of the IM match, I think it's like a voltage input through here, and then you'll have some resistor value here, and then you'll have a switch and two resistors that you can choose from based on the switch. So just as an example that I made up, say R1 is 100 ohms, so 100 ohms is up here. Then maybe on the ultra setting, R3, so if you change this switch to ultra, maybe you'll have a resistor value of 33.3333333 ohms. And then if you do the calculation, the voltage output is 0.25 volts. Now, if you switch it to the high setting, so moving the switch to R2, maybe in this high setting, you will have 100 ohms as well as the resistor value. And then if you do the calculation, the V out, the voltage output will be 0.5 volts out. And so based on these settings, as you can tell, if you're on the ultra setting, you'll have a lower voltage output compared to the high setting. And so if you're using sensitive in your earphones or headphones and you plug those in to here, your voltage output will be lower on the ultra setting versus high. And so you will hear a lower volume level. So that's just kind of how I think this IEM match works. So that pretty much sums up what I wanted to say about the IEM match. Um, I want to thank iFi again for letting me have this unit, this dongle for review. I do think it's very useful to have, especially if you're using sensitive in your headphones, in your earphones or headphones, and you want to listen to music at a low volume level. You want to have more granularity in terms of the volume control, or you want to reduce the amount of volume that you hear after the channel imbalance region of some amplifiers. So three advantages of the IM match. If you want to use this with balanced headphones, you will probably need two adapters for it, one for going into the amplifier itself to connect the uh, IM match, and another one to connect your headphones to the 3.5 millimeter jack of the IM match. So that's the disadvantage of the IM match, in my opinion, as well as this kind of loose connection here to me, it hasn't really affected how it sounds at all based on moving this in my headphone amplifiers. So when it's in the headphone amplifiers, moving this around doesn't affect the sound. Um, other than that, the build quality is pretty good. I did not find this to, uh, to really affect the sound output of my earphones, so that's good. It doesn't really affect the sound and pretty much you only get benefits of having the volume adjustment granularity and being able to just adjust the volume more. So thank you again to iFi. I definitely recommend this product for people like me who listen to music at low volume levels. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my review video of the Ultimate Ears Reference Remaster that will be coming out soon as well. I will have some more audio precision measurements of these, so it will be an interesting video for you guys. Um, thank you guys for keeping me kind of busy with all the comments and questions you guys have about audio. So if you have any questions about the IEM match, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and see you guys soon.